Hello, this is Greg Driscoll with PPP Transportation Safety Innovations, where we create safe, smart, simple solutions for roadway safety dangers. This is a presentation on the ReadyPave modular median. Let's get started. The ReadyPave modular median is a durable rubber urethane composite modular system designed so that you can rapidly build effective, durable, permanent, or seasonal medians, pedestrian refuges, or build-out structures. It's designed to make the road safer for motors, pedestrians, and cyclists. What makes it unique? There's four items that make it unique. One is that it's customizable. You can do customized configurations for most any traffic management need. It's also durable composite modules. These modules are designed for a long life, even under some of the toughest roadway environments. And it's simple to install. There's minimum labor and there's no heavy equipment needed. And lastly is it's community friendly. It's community friendly both in its install where it interrupts traffic very minimally and it improves the neighborhood safety once it is installed. So what's the modular medium made of? Uh, first, it's made of recycled rubber shard or buffings. These are buffings off of truck tire tread, no sidewalls in this. And also, it is these are shards or, or buffings, so they're elongated pieces. They're not crumb rubber, and that creates this sort of mechanical cross-linking when they're compressed together. Next, we're going to mix that rubber with a two-part polyurethane binder. This is actually a bit unusual for rubber products. A lot of times, they're using a single part uh, binder. We use a two-part high-quality polyurethane binder. In fact, it's about 30% of the weight of the module is this binder. And the reason we use it is because it creates more durability and more protection against petroleum and UV. We're going to take and mix those two things together. We're going to put it on a 160-ton press, and we're going to push all this together. It's going to create a dense, solid product. And with that, we're going to create the modules and those modules come together to create the median. So how is it fastened to the pavement? Well, we use a 240 millimeter Torx head stainless steel screw uh, that's going to give you long life, secure installation. Next, we're going to slide that through a nylon anchor block, a very uh, durable block that, uses, that does two things. It holds the modules down and holds the modules together. Next, we're going to use the patented Ready Plug Anchor. And this anchor, this is not an off-the-shelf anchor. It's completely um, custom designed for the Safer Roads product line and for the installation of, these product, of this product line into uh, asphalt and concrete pavement. You may notice that the uh, spread of the anchor is, is quite large. And it's designed that way to, to push out against the side walls of the hole to make sure that it has a secure fit. And also when you hold one of these in your hand, you gotta be really careful because the barbs on these are very uh, elongated and sharp. And the reason they do that is because it can bond or hold better to the larger aggregate that you find in the lower sections of asphalt or concrete that you're usually drilling into. And then lastly, we put a quick set two-part polyester resin in that hole. We do it for three reasons. One reason is, of course, to hold the ready plug in place. Number two is to reduce any type of vibratory crawl out of these bolts, uh, which you'll find in a lot of competitive products. And the bolts will, over time, begin to back themselves out, and then they become a road hazard as they do that. Some com come completely out. But those that are even more dangerous are the ones that are partially out and they can puncture tires and so forth. So this reduces that. And lastly is that it seals off that hole that you drilled into that pavement to reduce any chance of the intrusion of water uh, by drilling of that hole. So how is it installed? We basically put it on a standard stake bed or one ton truck. You can even use a three quarter ton pickup truck. We're going to take it out there to the site. We're going to prep the site. The ground, uh, we're, we're normally going to take that pavement, make sure it's nice and flat. Uh, in this case, we had 120 mil crosswalk bars that we had to grind up 
Otherwise, all you're looking for is anything like rocks and uh, any strange uh, profiles that might cause some uh, some deflection of the modules. The modules are are very rigid and slightly flexible, so uh, if there's something under them, uh, it could uh, it could actually show up in the surface. Next, we're going to lay these things out. We're going to lay it out. We're going to make sure it's nice and straight and, and they're tight and pushed together. Uh, you can also see next we're going to go through and we're going to uh, use a drill. This is a hammer drill, heavy duty hammer drill. We're going to drill the holes. Then we're going to blow out those holes. We need to make sure that the debris is out of them so that there's room for the anchor system and for the two part polyurethane resin. Uh, polyester resin and that's what we have here we're now we're going to pump that resin into the holes and then we're going to set the anchors and we're going to use an impact wrench and we're going to drive those anchors in so let's get started with the new york city dot install here what we see here is uh this is a top view showing uh, the area in which we installed the modular median it's a five lane roadway system here one the center lane is a marked median uh, not a raised median not a concrete median but just a marked median you can see it gets a lot of traffic you can tell that by looking at and noticing the wear on those markings uh, i don't know when this was taken but i don't see anybody around and let me tell you when we were out there installing this thing uh, there were swarms of folks uh, crossing that road so uh, this is uh, that image uh, i will say the purpose the reason the modular meeting was selected for this particular project was so that um, they could remove the product for one week out of the year and why is that this is in brooklyn this is a, on a major parade route of a major parade the labor day parade there in brooklyn it happens every september every year and um, and what they want to do is they need they needed a median that they could remove have the parade and put it right back down and do it uh, efficiently effectively and safely and that's the reason they chose to use uh, the modular median this is a front view of that same scene and uh, you'll see in a moment this is this is where the modular median is actually installed uh, this is a great view of that again uh, not only do you have the the multiple lanes this is actually showing you have somewhat like six lanes and then off to the side you'll notice that to the left and to the right there are also some access lanes uh, there so this could be a real complicated intersection especially uh, for pedestrians and that's quite a long haul for uh, someone that's elderly or disabled to make it all the way across uh, in the single uh, light change so they really needed something a place for these folks to be able to safely stand if they got caught by the light so in about four and a half hours we were able to move from the scene that you just saw to this this image is actually about a year old you can tell because it's actually been impacted by a vehicle probably a rather large vehicle right here uh, in fact i say that also because the original posts uh, were of a um, of aluminum unpainted aluminum so it looks like they had already had to replace a post at one point but what this shows is the incredible durability of this in this case i believe it's about a three and a half meter wide uh, modular median and how well it provides a protective area for the pedestrians here's another shot of it uh, this is a picture just after the install you can actually still see the mlt setup still around it with the barrels and so forth uh, a few things to point out here is they're using flexible delineated posts on the corner really good idea a way to bring more attention uh, you'll see in a moment uh, where we uh, in future ones we actually wrap a median alert a flexible median alert around the edge you'll see what those look like in just a moment uh, they also installed the sign they used a special uh, type of, of mount this is that that aluminum mount that I was talking about just a moment ago that had been changed evidently they mounted it directly to the module now these modules are incredibly dense and, and firm and strong uh, and but I would recommend that especially if you have a, a heavier assembly near the top of that that post uh, to put that post directly into the pavement in front of behind the uh, the median instead of on top here's another shot of it uh, installed and you can see it being used 
the side view, you can actually see someone there feels a little more safer standing on the unit rather than in the pedestrian uh, refuge area. Now, not too many people brag about their product being uninstalled, but in this case, I will for just a moment. Remember I told you that there was an uninstall going to take place in New York City DOT for the parade, and this is what they're doing right now is uninstalling the modular median uh, for a week period for them to come back and reinstall it after the Labor Day parade. This was done in about two and a half hours they were able to remove that. They went from this to this in only a matter of a couple hours which was incredible. When they came back, as an extra note, when they came back to install, it only took them about two and a half hours to reinstall it because all the holes were drilled. Uh, before I get started with the Tennessee DOT installation, I do want to mention a little quick story about that un uninstall that we did for New York City. Uh, there was a, as we were uninstalling, an elderly lady uh, was crossing the street. She stopped. It was amazing how engaged uh, the Brooklyn folks were and, and positively engaged. Um, and uh, the the elderly lady stopped and she said, what do you ask us what we were doing? We explained that we were removing them for the parade. And she said, oh, please tell me you're putting them back. Uh, we said, of course, yes, after the parade, they're going to come back and reinstall these. She said, well, I'm so thankful for these. I walk blocks down this road to cross here because this is where I feel safest crossing the road. So uh, great to see the public reaction uh, to putting in these these uh, safety mechanisms in the roadway. So now let's get to the Tennessee DOT. Uh, talk about success stories. This is a great success story. Uh, and uh, we have a full case study on this. And this is, uh, as you see here, this is called Nolansville Pike. This is uh, billed as the most dangerous crossing in Nashville. And you'll see why as we move along here. Off to the right there, uh, that is a Walmart. To the left, you'll see a McDonald's and then a liquor store up from that. And what you have right smack in the middle are two bus stops. And uh, unfortunately, the closest crossing, you can see the top of the image is Welshwood Drive. Unfortunately, there is no crossing right there. Uh, and the crossing to the south of there, there's an intersection a couple 300 yards maybe uh, down to uh, the intersection where there is a crossing. And what you find is a lot of people that are moving from one bus station to the other, a bus stop to the other, they're crossing that street really in droves. We'll talk about that more in a, in a second. But um, I will mention here that this is a, a heavy pedestrian area. Uh, it is also an economically depressed area and a lot of mass transit use here. So there's a lot of people moving from bus stop to bus stop. This is another shot. I'm actually at one of the bus uh, stops and I, you can see the bus lane there that I'm to my right. And then to my left, you look across cat a corner and you can see the other bus stop. This is another image of that same bus stop. And what you'll see here is it's a little confusing because that is a bus lane over there. And this is an intersection. So it almost appears to be an acceleration lane. There's a little bit of confusion of where the buses go and where the vehicles, the, the vehicle travelway is, and you'll see how we created a solution for that or how the DOT uh, designed a solution for that. And of course, here you can see the reversible uh, lane in the middle marked. This is a great image. It actually depicts what I saw a lot of when I went down there for the first time to, to examine the, the site to see how we could affect that site and make it safer. And this is what I saw a lot of. This is someone crossing the road. Remember, this is a 45,000 AADT roadway at 45 miles an hour. Uh, and it is jam packed with cars and pedestrians. Both this pedestrian is putting out their hand, telling the cars to stop while he crossed the street. This was not an unusual sight. Very dangerous. This was the solution that they came up with. This is a great install by the Tennessee Department of Transportation. They did it with their own crews. Uh, that's how uh, simple the process is. You'll see again that they used flexible delineators. In this case, they used uh, the yellow flashing um, beacons, and these are pedestrian activated. You see the fluorescent yellow green pedestrian crossing signs, and, uh, and then you'll see the delineators up here on the end post. You'll also notice that even though the modular median does have uh, nighttime visibility through its marking system that is around uh, the edges here, 
they also enhance that retroreflectivity by applying the median alert, which is an incredible enhancement. Uh, these reflective elements are, are very visible at night. You can see also they use that, by the way, on the white and the yellow on the noses to, uh, to make them more visible uh, from both directions when they use the yellow. And you'll notice also that there are some detectable warning mats here. These are called duos. And the reason they are duos is they actually have integrated a message in them. In these cases, uh, this is a, uh, a message that says, uh, says to, to look always. And, uh, and so as the pedestrian crosses the road, looking down at their phone, uh, which always happens, right? Uh, and they look down and they, there's this message on the pavement kind of in the direction they're looking. So it really distracts them from their distraction as, as the purpose of the duo. In my three decades in the traffic safety industry, I've yet to see a traffic safety improvement get so much positive play from the media, both immediately and ongoing. Even today, you can do a search on Nolensville Road and pedestrian accidents or pedestrians in Nolensville Road, and you'll still continue to see positive write-ups about this installation. Immediately, there was there was uh, these publications like this was a uh, a video done by a local news channel. It says pedestrians feel safer after changes in the dangerous intersection. Improved crosswalk helps pedestrians at Nashville's most dangerous intersection. We saw this immediately and we continue to see it. Here's a, a one particular excerpt. It says, since Tennessee Department of Transportation upgraded crossing at Nolensville Road and Washwood Drive in December, there have been no pedestrian accidents here. Uh, it averaged one pedestrian death annually between 2010 and 2017. This was not only a win for the pedestrians and the cyclists that use this roadway, but also it was a win for the DOT themselves. Next, uh, this is the uh, study that was done in 2019, Walk, Bike, Nashville, and uh, they titled the study, Nolensville Numbers Prove Positive. So this was, uh, again, on Nolensville Road. The problem was they had 45,000 AADT. It was a five-lane road with a reversible lane in the middle, a uh, high pedestrian count. They had had seven deaths in seven years, dozens of injuries and incidences, and they had a limited budget and a limited time to get the job done. Their solution was to provide a mid-block crossing for the pedestrians. They used uh, pavement markings, which was a preformed thermoplastic. They use lighted signs and beacons, as you saw in the uh, prior images. They also used, of course, the detectable warnings, the ready mat duo, and then reflective delineators as well. The anchor to the system was the modular medians that created this, this structural delineation uh, in, a, in a safe place for the pedestrians uh, to stand as they were crossing the road. Uh, if they got caught by traffic or if for any other reason they needed to, they had that safe area. Both, uh, I don't know if you noticed the images before, but both for the division of the bus lane and the travel way, and then of course the travel ways of going opposite directions. This came in under $30,000 on the budget and it was installed in less than eight hours. They installed this entire system in less than eight hours. Uh, some are billing it as a pop-up project because it happened so darn quick. All right, here's the true success of the story. Uh, there were there have been zero deaths since the install of the mid-block crossing, and there have been two injuries. Not exactly sure, this is from the study, not sure if the injuries actually occurred, likely not in the crosswalk itself, but definitely within that block. This is really cool. 88% of the pedestrians are using the crosswalk and 80% of the cyclists. In this study, they actually camped out and they watched the pedestrians. It's great to see that, you know, it's if I build it, will they use it? And in this case, they absolutely used it. That you can tell how badly it was needed because of that. This is, uh, again, a great success story for the Tennessee Department of Transportation. I do want to mention here, uh, this is in February of 2018. We installed this in December of 2017. Uh, and I want to call this out. You can see the damage here on the bottom left-hand image. 
Basically, uh, in the middle of the night, a car plowed through this area. It knocked over three of those signs. You can see wiped out the beacons. They're still part of the car there. And uh, the car left uh, for good reason, I can imagine. Uh, so they left the scene of the accident. And um, and uh, this, is a, this is a statement by the Tennessee DOT Transportation uh, Project Specialist. It says, the sign assemblies were destroyed but the modular medians withstood the impact and looked no different from the day they were installed. We inspected them carefully anyway, but no further maintenance was needed. This is a testament to the durability of this product, uh, both for permanent or for seasonal use. However you're going to use it, remember these fa this fastening system is, is a, an incredible system that's going to hold this to the ground under most any conditions. It's also a testament to the modules themselves. Uh, their their density, their their makeup, their design, and their materials that they're made of. All right, now we're going to talk about design options real quick. As you can see, this is uh, similar to the design. This is a, a pedestrian refuge that was built out of the modular median, similar to New York City DOT. This is a mid-block uh, median setup, which is similar to the Tennessee DOT. This is a miniature uh, mid block or I'm sorry intersection pedestrian refuge now this uses the modular median splitter which is 500 millimeters wide normally you're going to want that bigger but this was a narrow road this was done actually in Greensboro this was a narrow road and we wanted to bring attention to this particular uh, uh, intersection of roadway there was a lot of pedestrian traffic so we put this splitter in there created this mini uh, pedestrian refuge but also what it did was it really brought attention to this intersection and made it much safer also you can create bulb outs for your uh, traffic or for your parking on uh, your side road parking you can see that's what we use there but we also can create the bulb outs for the pedestrian crossing as well especially when you have parked vehicles and you want to be able to get that that uh, pedestrian to be able to step out there safely and look to make sure there's no cars coming. Next, this is a uh, chicane, uh, just a traffic calming measure that's used. And you can see some uh, parking bulb outs were used there. This is a pinch or a choke. Uh, that's again, a traffic calming technique. And then here, this is where the modular median was used uh, to create an end cap. Uh, creating a safe pedestrian refuge once again. And this was make sure that it's set back far enough uh, from the intersection that you can do that without causing a hazard to the vehicles. And this is a median extension. This is when the median, a lot of times they'll stop short uh, the concrete median and then they'll do a marked median. But sometimes that marked median can be abused by the turning traffic and you want to create some kind of structural delineation device and it's great for for that extension of that median let's bring it all together now let's start with equipment needs there's no heavy equipment or specialty equipment that's required for the installation of the modular median outside of what you'll normally find in most agency shops also transportation can be done on a one-ton pickup truck or stake bed uh, making transportation of the materials very easy. Just load it up and head it out to the site. Next is what expertise is needed. No special training or craftsmanship is needed for the install of the modular median. Speed of install. This takes hours versus days, less traffic disruption, less labor cost. Custom design capability as we just reviewed. Multiple module types can be assembled to pretty much create any type of configuration to meet the traffic management need. It is removable for either seasonal reasons uh, or if there's an overlay. A lot of times we delay making a roadway safer because uh, you're going to be coming in and overlaying that in a short period in the next year or two. You're afraid of losing your investment. This way you don't lose your investment. You can actually lift it up and then put it back down after the overlay. And material cost. Big question, how much does it cost? It usually runs between $35 and $45 a square foot, depending on how many modules you get and what type of modules are needed for the project. And thank you very much for attending this presentation on the Ready Paved Modular Median with PPP Transportation Safety Innovations. You will notice that there are 
two links down here. One is pppcatalog.com Safer Roads, and one is pppcatalog.com Tennessee DOT. The Safer Roads link will take you to all of the Safer Roads products that we have, including speed cushion, speed bumps, and lane separator, the Orca lane separator, which is another outstanding product, and then also the Tennessee DOT uh, extension, which is going to take you to uh, the case study and the video on that product. So please feel free to browse our website, go to these, these places. If there's anything more we can do for you, please contact us. And uh, this is Greg Driscoll, and God bless. Thank you very much.